Okay, <clears throat> I've got these two bowls. I roughed the outside of them yesterday. Uh, and then we had a storm and we uh, had a power failure. So I just left them buried in the shavings on the floor overnight. Power's back on today, so I'm going to uh, continue with them. They're both pretty much the same size, same depth. They're both black walnut. Uh, so I thought it would be a good uh, they would be good ones to uh, use to sort of compare uh, do a comparison of the, the two coin systems that I have. So I'll just arbitrarily choose one and mount it on the lathe here. So that's about 11 and a half inches. So that means I will want a wall thickness of an oh, inch and a quarter, we'll say. systems use uh, take about a three-eighths of an inch kerf so that's just an approximation there but, and that will give me a core of about eight inches which is fine um, so I'll do the first one using the one-way coring easy core system. basically consists of this base plate and a couple of knives. I'm relatively sure that that knife is still sharp enough. Well, maybe just to be, so I'm not introducing factors that uh, I will sharpen both of my, I'll sharpen the cutter here and then sharpen the McNaughton. So, Start out on a, we'll say a level playing field. So back to where we were. So I've got a freshly sharpened cutter installed. I've marked on where I want my core to be cut. So the instructions that come with, or the yeah, instructional video that comes with the uh, one-way system. Recommends cutting a plywood template uh, to go in here to space you the proper distance away from the headstock and also that will square up the plate. 
probably a really good idea. I have not done that yet. Um, but one thing that that is predicated on, that, that assumes that you're always using the same chuck, or that the offset from the face of the headstock to the face of the jaws is always going to be the same. I sometimes core with my stronghold, which I have here, and I sometimes core with my talon chuck. There's a quarter of an inch difference in the offset, so I'd have to make a plywood template for each chuck and also for each knife set. So I just haven't done that, and then I'd have to keep track of them. That's the big thing. Not so much making them as keeping track of them. So I just measure so far. Uh, I have measured from the face of the headstock to the face of my jaws on all my chucks and I've marked right on the chuck body what that dimension is so I don't have to think about it, I just read it there. In this case that's six and one half inches from the face of this headstock to the face of these jaws which since the jaws are seated against the bottom of the bowl, that's the outside bottom of the outside bowl. That's six and a half inches. Whatever I want my bottom thickness to be, I add that on there. In this case, I've already got a tenon on there, so I'm not going to lose any depth cutting a tenon when I bring it back after it's dry. So I'm going to go for a three quarter inch thickness on the bottom. So six and a half inches plus a three quarter inch bottom thickness takes me to seven and a quarter inches to the inside surface of this outside bowl. Uh, all my knife sets, I have measured how far taken see what's on camera and what isn't here okay I've taken all my knife sets I've swung them out so that the shank is parallel to this and measured how far it is from uh, the outside corner of this cutter to the front edge of this plate and I've marked all my knives with that dimension. Each knife is different. So this one is four inches. So I want the inside bottom of this outside bowl to be seven and a quarter inches from the headstock and I know that this knife is going to swing four inches past this plate. So I add seven and a quarter and four gives me eleven and a quarter inches from the headstock to the front of this plate. So I need that to be eleven and a quarter inches. And I want the plate to be square so I just drop a square on there and I want the knife to start cutting on my kerf so that means that I want to pull it out to about there so that should be where I want my Plate locked down, double check, I'm at 11 and a quarter inches, so I know that the bottom of this outside bowl is going to be three quarters of an inch thick. I don't have to guess, I know. This other post acts as a tool rest for the cutter. So, so initially I just want it near the face of the bowl and underneath 
this arm. And slug that down. And these knives, while they are cut out sufficiently that the, uh, the live sender will pass over top of that, and I can use the tail sender for coring as a rule, simply because of the radius of this cutter, or this particular knife, compared to the radius of the bowl, my pivot point is behind center and I can't quite get past the knife to bring the tailstock up yet. So once I am getting near the end of the cut, I will put the tailstock up. And I have found it works, seems to work uh, best at around 200 RPM for me anyway. All right. So we're ready to start coring. I guess everything's on camera there. I seem to uh, seem to have good luck at 200 RPM with this system. This area of the arm, right behind the cutter, is ramped. Uh, when you're deep enough in the kerf so that the top of this ramp is flush with the face of the blank, that's a cue that it would be a good idea to start moving the tool rest into the kerf. So I just put it in till it bottoms out and then back it up just a little bit so it's not riding right on the bottom of the cut. Of course it wouldn't be for long if I did have it. Uh, and now there's, a, now there's a tool rest in there. If I turn the bowl like this, if there's any shavings trapped in that kerf, they're going to collect on top of this tool rest and be in the way when I try to put the cutter in. So I want to rotate it backwards and swing the cutter in until it's bottomed out and then start the lathe back up. And when I'm, uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure against the handle here to uh, feed the cutter in. Just a nice steady pressure. Uh, as long as the shavings are coming out of the kerf, uh, there's no reason to pull the knife out to clear them, but uh, every once in a while you should pull them out to clear it. This arm comes around to where it's over top of this post. That's another cue that I'm getting quite a bit of tool overhang on the inside there, and it would be a good time to shift the cutter further in. Now I am actually probably getting fairly close to being done here, but. Uh, 
I still don't want to have too much tool overhang in there. And once again, rotate it backwards, bring the cutter in, and now I'll bring the tail stock up, just so when that core comes free, it doesn't go bouncing around the shop on me. And as I said, I thought I was pretty close. Because the pivot point was behind center, my arm didn't get, get right around to parallel to the face of the bowl before it came free. And because I had the tail stock there, there was no uh, big dramatic moments when that core came free. And this just uses a standard clamp block underneath. It's narrow enough that I can drop it between the ways. And then uh, when I get enough slack, I can turn it so it hooks under the bottom of the uh, bedways. So now I just want to clean up the bottom the inside of this bowl. Yeah, clean up the inside of the bowl, not the bottom. I'm going to leave the camera like that. Uh, you're not going to have as good a view of what I'm doing right now, but it's just standard stuff anyway. Uh, and I will probably, if I move it now, I'll forget to put it back when I start coring the next one with the McNaughton system. And uh, you won't get very good view of that.
Okay. So that's uh, a bowl cord using the uh, one way easy core. I was aiming for a three quarter inch bottom thickness. And it looks like I got a three quarter inch bottom thickness. If I can get things lined up there. So you can, that is one of the better features of the one way system is it's, you can, before you even start cutting, you, uh, you know how thick you're leaving your bottom. It's predictable. Uh, the setup is a little longer than with the McNaughton. So if you're only doing one core like I've done here, it may actually be quicker to use the McNaughton. Although, at my skill level, I can't predict how thick I'm leaving the bottom that well. But, if you're doing multiple cores from a big blank, uh, like if you've got a large blank and you're making you're taking more than one core out of it uh, the, the big advantage for the one way system for me anyway is that I can take that smallest core for I can set it up here take my smallest core reset whatever I need to do and take the next core and if I'm doing another one uh, reset again and take the third core without taking the core the coring rig off the lathe uh, I can start with the smallest one because I can calculate to a high degree of accuracy where that knife is going uh, and I can say well I want that bottom to be three quarters of an inch thick uh, the next core because I'm gonna have to cut a tenon on the bottom of that bowl when I bring it back when it's dry I'm gonna leave an inch of thickness there uh, you can add all those things up the curve is three-eighths so inch and a quarter plus three-eighths plus one inch plus three-eighths and that add those together uh, and it tells you exactly where to put that platform for that smallest core to leave enough wood for the subsequent cores. I wouldn't dare try starting on the, in the smallest core and working out uh, with a McNaughton system. I'm just not good enough with it to do that. Maybe some people are, but I'm not. So. Uh, I'll set that aside and we'll get down to the other one. 